What do you guys think is going to be, how quickly do you think that uh, FSD is going to improve and what will they, where will they be by August 8th? Do you think that they would have it feature complete? And what does that mean? That means that there's reverse, it can recognize emergency vehicles, it can do summon, and it could be, you know, self itself to banish, to park itself. And is there other features that you think it will need to be? Or does it not even need to be complete by August 8th? It's just a presentation. Let's start with you, Alexandra. What do you think? Um, I expect August 8th to be mainly a business case presentation. We may have already a prototype of a futuristic robo taxi, but it, no, it really doesn't matter to me whether that car is there or not. For me, it is much more confirmation of uh, Autonomy Day 2018. I, I did put that clip in my feed um, over the weekend. So people, if you want to see that eight minute clip where um, Elon presented the business case then, uh, explaining that any Tesla owner who wants to integrate the fleet can make $30,000 a year um, running his Tesla as a, as a robot taxi. Uh, and, and I think that just needs updating. And I, and, and that's the major part I'm looking forward to. I, I, I really expect to have the financial business plan aspects into it. Now, will it be ready by then? Uh, it will have certainly improved. I mean, iterations are now going, you know, in such huge steps and so quickly. So will it have all the five elements you, you just mentioned? Could be, could be, could be not. I mean, that, that that's it. But by then we have in North America, at least, I don't know, 1.5, 2 million cars that are ready to be deployed if they want to be deployed. And they, they will announce a date when this will become doable. There may be an app that is then downloadable. Um, so I think that that's much more the, the aspect that is important, that people understand the financials of it and then what will follow. And actually in 2018, Elon addressed that already. What will follow by Tesla for all the areas that are not covered by Tesla owners wanting to run their Teslas as, as robot taxis. So that's then the next car. And, uh, you know, we, we may get later into design aspects of it, but that is where the scalability will really hit home and where I hope, you know, Wall Street will finally understand what this is all about. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I think uh, there's your question. I think there's two kinds of feature complete going on. There's this FSD feature complete as a kind of a level two vehicle with the reverse and smart summon. And I think that's going to happen here pretty quickly. It looks like they can rapidly integrate features and, and rapidly test and rapidly deploy now to the fleet. Uh, it looks like it's a pretty stable platform. Uh, and given how the, the, the training looks like it's accelerated, um, I think a really important note, I think you have a great agenda for today, Herbert. I think a really important note is Elon wanted to make it very clear that he's number two, at least for now, uh, and growing in terms of, of, of bringing on compute and uh, XAI can be number three. And uh, I think that's really important in, certain, in terms of how Tesla is positioned and how his companies are positioned as AI companies. I don't know how FinTech and the financial media could even avoid having this conversation. Is this an AI company or not when they're buying more AI compute? And now they're actually putting it to use. And and putting it the real world use. Remember, you know the output of language models and the in the kind of the utilization rate of these language models versus what well, I think we're going to see with the utilization rate of FSD and reaching a billion miles and then kind of hitting that hockey stick inflection point. I think they're going to be two fundamentally different different things in terms of its usefulness. I think the ability uh, to move throughout the real world, whether it's on a vehicle or in a robot. Uh, is going to prove to be a lot more meaningful. Not that you don't need both in terms of language models and movement, but I think this is going to prove to be a lot more useful and meaningful. And in, in terms of uh, aid, uh, in terms of the uh, event, I think um, they definitely want to be able to demonstrate the the basic features of a robo taxi. Will it be feature complete? It's hard to say, um, but I don't know if it needs to be fully feature complete, but be able to do the basic demo of you know, being able to actually, you know, drive itself up onto stage and potentially do a pickup, uh, whether it's on video or it's live, 
uh, and be able to do kind of everything, the full, you know, app and functionality, I think that would be uh, very relevant to say, all right, they really thought this through. They've got, you know, they've got it running at some level and now they just need to really honestly debug this and, and scale it out. So I think it's pretty exciting uh, in terms of what this could be. Um, so. Do you guys think that there's a chance that um, they don't offer RoboTaxi for the current owners? Is that a zero chance? Because I know, Alexander, you just said, look what the, he wrote in eight years ago. <laughs> Is it still valid? Well, it's six years ago, five and a half years ago, but it, uh, no, of course they will, they will let Tesla owners integrate. There's, for me, there's zero chance that, uh, it will be only a Tesla owned dedicated network. I'm, I'm certain they will let, I mean, that was always the business case for, for robot taxis, at least part of the business case. The, the question obviously is how much, how many owners will adopt that? I, I've spoken to a couple of owners who said, you know, I love my ex, but I'm not going to put it on the, the street. I, I don't want to share that. I mean, um, will current Uber and Lyft drivers change? Will they think, you know, will they say, okay, I'd rather have now a Tesla and when I'm not, when I'm not having it? Because the one thing you have to understand, I think there is one issue we have not covered yet, is there are cities that currently need licenses for Uber drivers to um, to drive. So I think it's called a TLC license or something like that. I may be, I may be wrong on that. Um, so what happens when... Um, a car drives by itself. Who needs a license or not? For example, New York. New York has in, in, in nearly all the agglomeration of New York City, uh, you need you need this license in order to be either a cab driver or uh, an Uber driver. So there there are stuff to it where you know it may be difficult for a current Tesla owner who is willing to do it to actually set it up. And it may be easier for for Tesla itself having a master license for all their own fleet. But other than that, I, I'm, I cannot imagine Tesla preventing any Tesla owner to be part of the network. Mm -hmm. Show of hands, who here thinks that Tesla is going to partner with a rideshare company like an Uber or Lyft or something like that? What for? Exactly. <laughs> so you're just like, no? <laughs> well, you, James? I was like, no? There's no point. No, no. There's mm -hmm. Why? What about you, Jeff? Um, the yeah. only thing I could see potentially is for customer data. Uh, both on, um, you know, both on the rideshare side and and maybe the food or goods side, but that could be for a limited period of time. It could be to kind of test Tesla's, Tesla's usefulness. Uh, I don't know if they need to. Um, yeah, I don't know if they they have to. The other thing I would watch with Robo Taxi is as FSD improves, I, I'm wondering what happens to the used car market for threes and Ys. And and watch that market. The the search data is already saying that that search that it's ramping up, and just watch that. If those things start getting vacuumed up pretty quickly, that could be very telling. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. And I'd like to circle back on some of the stuff that was said by both Alexandra and Jeff. First of all. Uh, all the other AGI applications, they are truly LMs, and Elon said this is baby AGI. It's a real world application. Nothing else like that exists out there. And the fact that Tesla is not even considered an AI play is comical. And it's great. It's a gift to us because we get to stack at a cheap price. Second, regarding Jeff, what you said about RoboTaxi, could they do a demo driving today? I imagine myself, I said, take me to the gym, click. All that needs to be done is two things. One, turn off the nag and have the passenger be sitting in the back seat or whatever. It goes to the gym. It parks right up at the front door. And then, then it just needs to learn how to drive off and park itself or go to the next destination. I mean, they, they've done the hard part. So closing the loop on the robotaxi, I think it's already there. And the third thing that I think is very important to consider, Elon Musk has been burnt in the past. He's been over -exuber exuberant about some of his dime lines. I think right now he's much more conservative. He doesn't make the same mistake twice. So he's no longer the two week Elon guy instead. I think you picked 88 for an exact reason and they will be ready. I could be wrong, but they are my thoughts. You're that? right on pointing out the date. You're right on pointing out that date is just so iconic. Um, who has booked their flights? 
<laughs> no, but who who actually agrees that uh, eight? He he had he did not just say it's going to be eight eight, and then now the team is scrambling. Oh no, this has been in the making for a while. I mean, uh, that Reuters story was incorrect, but it wasn't baseless, right? I mean, they they heard stuff and they obviously exaggerated and pulled it on the wrong side of things, but there was stuff in there uh, that is not wrong. So the deprioritization of the Model 2 to now really um, put the pedal to the metal for the, for the robo-taxi date, that decision was taken a couple of weeks, short months prior to last week. So this is not just you know, this was not just uh, announced and made up by Reuters, and then suddenly Elon had to react and said, "Okay, let's do this uh, on on a uh, August 8th. No, 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 no. Reuters got some wind on some on some issues, blew the whole story up, and you know, ran with the headline cancellation of whatever Model Two because they knew that could be seen as the most harmful thing by some. Wall Street whisperers. And uh, and so that's where they wanted to carry the story. But that doesn't mean they they didn't have some of the information that was correct. And especially the ones on conversation with suppliers that were, you know, timeline sensitive. Jeff can explain that much better than me. That had to be delayed. And I mean, so you have to give these people reasons why it's going to be delayed. And uh, and so that had and and there was part of that that was uh, that was certainly truthful and that dated from January February not from April. Yeah, gotcha. I, I agree with I agree with that as well. So I do know that Elon and Tesla like to mess around with Wall Street and media, so they probably threw them a few breadcrumbs, knowing they get confused and run down a dead end. First of all, and second of all, it's pretty clear that. If you think about building a Model 2 when BYD has a $10,000 Model 0 0.5, whatever you want to call it, that already exists. That's not a special thing to develop. But what is, is the robotaxi. So I agree as well wholeheartedly with Alexander that they are pivoting their resources to ramp robotaxi. That is the sense of urgency I see right now. When did they release the first time 12.1? Because, I mean, I, I recall very well it was second half of August when Elon did in his S the drive around, you know, with the first neural net version. And then I think the first 12.1 came out probably January or whatever, right? I, I mean, yeah. yeah. So between that and the moment of the leaked conversations with suppliers that's very short weeks that's really short so there they got convinced we got this and yeah. we're turning the switch because up to that moment up to that moment it was probably in peril they said okay fair enough as long as we don't have major breakthrough in fsd we're gonna we're gonna continue working on the compact car again unboxing and the compact car will come this is not about this is not cancelled but this is a much more competitive segment where you know there will be some chinese cars there may even be eventually some european cars that are competitive in that segment that doesn't mean tesla is not doing it there's a huge market and they can gain it but what makes them truly different is fsd and that's where they have to take the time advantage i mean there are some chinese people working on uh, on the chinese fsd i'm not saying they are even halfway there herbert you got a great chart on that but uh, but but it is the most distinguishing mode they have. And so once they came to the confidence level that we got it, we can do that, well, there was Elon. Remember what he said to Lars when he said to them, okay, you got 180 days to develop the Cybertruck like this and like that. And 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 uh, and Lars explained that they started chatting on how they wanted to do it. And Elon came back and said, now it's 90. I don't want you chatting. I want you doing. And I think that's exactly what happened with August 8th. He just put the line in the sand and everybody is now, okay, here we can concentrate on it. And that's it. Yeah. And the very first FSD test of version 12, that demo was August 26th. So it's not 8.8, eight, but close, close enough.